Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is my first YouTube video. Today I want to show you guys how to make these knit jumpers that are like, they're all over TikTok, Pinterest. And I, I, I remember when I was looking for how to make this, there wasn't a lot of YouTube videos. There was one though, there was one. And I'll link it in the description. Hers helped me. So if this tutorial doesn't help you, check hers out. If you're looking for a first project on your central machine, I would recommend doing something like a tube top or a beanie. Something that you can make in a circle in the tube setting because the tube setting kind of helps you figure out how the machine works. So then you can go move on to the panel setting and you won't skip stitches. I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible in this. So I'm gonna try to make it as beginner friendly as I can, but this is my first tutorial, so. I don't know, I'll try my best. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so for materials, you're gonna need your 48 pin central machine and some yarn, some scissors, a crochet hook and the little picker that the machine comes with. I'm using the yarn be chloe yarn in the color jade taffeta i definitely recommend using a thinner yarn like these rather than something like red heart acrylic yarn because those can get caught in your machine and just cause your project to drop stitches or tighten or loosen stitches and it just doesn't look very even so i definitely recommend using a yarn on the thinner side then for these of course i have just i'm using a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook then of course the little this comes with the machine. I don't know what it's called. A little yarn picker, I guess. And then some scissors. And lastly, you're gonna need some stitch markers. I bought a whole pack of stitch markers. Like I folded and I bought a whole pack of stitch markers and I lost them. So I'm gonna try to use these little clips I have. Hope these work. You can use things like safety pins, bobby pins, actual stitch markers, yarn. You can use anything too. Okay, first thing you wanna do is make sure that your machine is on panel mode because we're making four panels and we're gonna sew them together. Um, I don't have any sizing or measurements or anything to kind of give you an idea. I can kind of give you an idea of what sizes to make based off me. For my front panel, I do 42. And then for my sleeves, I do 35 and I do 100 rows for the front panel, 130 rows for the arms. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is take your yarn Make sure you're using a thin yarn. If you use a thick yarn, your your machine is gonna mess it up. It's gonna have like little bumps and you're, it's just not gonna look very good. But if you're using a thin yarn, it's much easier to crank one and then two, it'll just look better. So you're gonna go under your white peg, take this, this scrap yarn, just throw it back there. It's not a big deal. And to cast on, you're going to go in front and behind, in behind the pegs. So we are already in front of one peg. So we're gonna crank go behind this next this next peg go in front of the one after that making sure to go underneath the hook and then behind in front behind in front and i'm going to keep doing this until i reach 42 pegs the 42nd peg I'm at my 42nd peg and the mistake I used to make and the reason why a lot of people are dropping stitches is not going behind this little these things so what you're gonna want to do is keep cranking until you're underneath the peg that's next to the 42nd stitch so here's 42 and then here's the peg right after and now I can start cranking so I'm gonna go into the little yarn feeder holder thing, into the tension holder. I'm still holding this yarn pretty tight. So now that we're under all of those pegs, we can start cranking in the other direction, making sure to go slow because you don't wanna drop any stitches. You wanna make sure that your yarn is going under all of the pegs and all the, under all the little bumps. And it is going to be a little bumpy when you first start, that's normal. Okay, I've cranked until I can't crank, which is to the white peg. And as you can see, it's a little loose. I'm missing these two pegs. And this is where a lot of people tend to drop stitches. You want to make sure that you're pulling this. You see how I went under that peg? And then 
this peg this one right here the stitch is going to be dropped it's it, it happens to everybody it's not that's what happens on panel mode so don't freak out when it drops so now that we're under all of those pegs we can start cranking in the other direction making sure to go slow because you don't want to drop any stitches you want to make sure that your yarn is going under all of the pegs and all the, under all the little bumps and it is going to be a little bumpy when you first start that's normal okay so i've cranked um until my machine won't let me crank anymore and i've reached the white peg so now what you're going to do is make sure you're holding this even though it's on the tension you still want to kind of pull it tight when you're beginning and ending stitches so that the ends of your project won't be loose so now i'm going to start cranking into the other direction Just again slowly making sure that my yarn is going under all the pegs and when you reach the white peg you don't have to make sure you're under any bumps because the machine kind of stops for you so like you just keep cranking until you don't you can't crank anymore and then once you're there then you're you're gonna drop your first stitch so where i was at the white stitch it's going to drop but that's okay i have to set everybody on panel mode it's normal so i'm cranking and my machine is kind of stuck and that's because this little yarn has been caught on the top and what you have to, all you have to do is push it down so i'm reaching my last my 40 second um pin and what people like a lot of people do they reach it they crank back but they're dropping stitches and they don't know why the reason why is again you have to be making sure you're going under this bump so i'm going to keep cranking until i'm under there i've just i've just gone under that bump right here and it looks like it's going on the 43rd um peg but it's actually not it's just holding it there so when i crank back you see it lets go and i'm able to go right back onto my 42nd peg so cranking now now you're going to want to start counting your rows the row counter does not work on panel mode so what i recommend is having an app i have there's an app on iphone i'll see if i can link it in the description but just go on the app store and search row counter in it'll bring up row counters and every time you hit on a row just put the plus and you can count your rows i do 100 rows to get the desired length that i want so this row that i'm working up right now is going to be counted as row number one i'm just going to keep cranking until i reach 100 rows 100 rows and i'll show you guys what that looks like it's again going to be like a little bumpy and rough when you're first starting but that's just See, I'm getting kind of stuck, but that's because that's there. So I'm gonna push that back. Keep cranking, and I can't crank anymore. I've reached my white peg. This is my tail. I reached my white peg, and so I'm going to hold this kind of tight. Go back around, start cranking again. And if you still find that you're dropping stitches, um, you could just go on YouTube and search panel, like how to work panel mode without dropping stitches. And there's lots of tutorials on that. There's lots of deeper explanations. I really hope this is helpful. But yeah, I'm just cranking, counting my rows, cranking, counting my rows. And yeah, really take your time with this. You're, hand, you're literally hand making a sweater. Like that's just, it's just a reminder. Really take your time, enjoy the process. Put on a show, put on some music, put on a podcast. Just enjoy it. Yeah, I'm just cranking. It's starting to get since I'm a couple rows in, I can start going a little faster because I'm not so worried about dropping stitches. Still coming, still pulling the yarn tight at the beginning and ends of rows. But yeah, just cranking, cranking, cranking until I reach that 100th row. I'm on row. I just did row five. I'm on row six now. So yeah. Just kind of keep cranking. It's really easy. This is really what you're going to be doing for the next two hours. <laughs> you can also, um, on Amazon, I know that they have digital row counters for like panel settings i'm definitely looking into buying one but 
I just don't know which one to get. Like, there's so many. So, like, if you guys have any, uh, any that you recommend, please let me know in the comments. Because I really, I really do need one, and I really want to get one. So, I don't have to manually count my rows, which can kind of slow me down. Like, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just, like, do rows and then count them as I go and then add 10 to my counter. So, like, I'll do, I'll crank 10 rows and then add 10 rows on my little counter. Crank 10, add 10, instead of doing 1, 1, 1, 1. Does that make sense? Um, I'm just chatting. I'm just chatting. Yeah, I definitely want to get one of those. And they also have, like, a little tension thing for, like, getting the static off, which I think is really cool. I might get that, too. I don't know. I'm gonna get all the little mix and mix and mix for this machine. But yeah, I'm just thinking. Also, if you're making this right now, comment what color you're doing. I really want to like know what color you're doing or colors if you're doing colors. There's like so many types of colors you can make with these jumpers that would look so cool. I definitely want to do one that's like block colors. So like the sleeves are different colors, the, the body, the bodies are different colors, like you know, instead of like these little ombre colors. But yeah, this is how it's looking after 13 rows. Still cranking. Still cranking strong. I really hope this video is helpful. Honestly, it's my first tutorial. If you guys have any tips for like, I don't know, if you find that I'm doing something that's confusing you or kind of like, uh, she could do better at this or she could use this, please, please, please help me. Like, tell me, let me know in the comments. Like, I really, I'm really open to suggestions. Because if this is not helping, then <laughs> please tell me how I can help because I'm trying my best. See, I'm just cranking. Cranking, cranking, cranking. Also, um, if you guys make YouTube videos, like, put me on. Like, put me on to the good cameras, put me on to the good ring lights, put me on to the good tripods, put me on to the good editing softwares. I was gonna get, um, Final Cut Pro. Come to find out, it's $300. What? Like, uh, I don't know about that, I don't know about that. But they do, I think they have, like, a 90-day free trial. So I'm probably just gonna film a bunch of videos, edit them on there, and hopefully I'll have like 10 videos that I can edit on there. <sighs> but yeah. Let me let me leave let me leave y'all to it. Go go crank. Go crank. Or crank with me. I'll speed it up. We can crank together like besties. So yeah, let me just crank. Um put on some Ginny and Georgia. And I'll be back. Also put guys put me on some show recommendations because they're taking Jane the Virgin off Netflix and I'm so upset about it. Even though I've seen it over four times, I'm still mad about it. Because <laughs> I'm in the middle of watching it again and they're about to take it off and it's just getting good. Like, come on. But yeah, put me on to some shows because <sighs> I'm almost done with breaking bad. And they're taking off Jane the Virgin, so after I finish Jamie and Georgia, I don't know what I'm gonna watch. So yeah, anyways, 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 let me, let me time lapse. I'll hit y'all when I hit 50 rows, and I'll update you guys. Just hit 50 rows. This is what we're looking like. So pretty. I'm loving the way this yarn looks. But if you're not dropping any stitches, your ends should look like this. You'll know if you're dropping stitches, trust you're gonna get really frustrated that's how i was but hopefully y'all are better than me i was almost i was about to give up but yeah this is this is 50. let's get to 100. we have 50 let's make it 100. So this is what 100 rows looks like and I love knitting because it is so stretchy like do you see how stretchy that is it's so nice but now we're gonna cast off and casting off is pretty easy some scissors and then the little 
sneed thingy comes with the machine. So what you're gonna do is first you're just gonna take a long tail, not super long, because then it can take forever, but just long enough to where it can at least wrap around your bracket, plus more. Then you're gonna take your scissors, And then you're gonna want to detach this from the ooh, deta detach that from the yarn thingy, the little tension loop. Unhook this, and then you're just going to take your scrap yarn, put it in the middle. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna start cranking very slowly, just like you would if you were um, still making your bracket. So very slowly cranking. Until I make it back to, until I can't crank anymore. And just to make things a little easier, I like to go to tube mode, crank a little more, unleash this. And now this is where my first loop is. Okay, so here we are. Here's my tail, I'm going to crank again just to unhook it from there and now we are here okay so what you're gonna do is you don't want these to unhook from these little pegs because then you're gonna drop stitches so I'm just going to take my very carefully because you do not want to release these yet take my tail feed it into the little thing and then so we're here Boom. So now you're going to start picking these stitches up. So you're going to just go under there. I don't know if you can see. You're just going to start picking these up. Oops. Careful. Being careful not to drop them. So what you can do is you could pick one up at a time and then pull the yarn through. I'll show you one more time. So pick it up. Pull the yarn through. Getting caught up. Pull it up. Pull the yarn through. Or you could do this method, which is much I find it to be much faster. It's what I do. Is I just pick all um as much up as I can. I'll just pick up as many as I can. Boom. Boom. Oh crap, you cannot see. I am so sorry. Forgive me. This is my first time doing this. But as you can see, I'm just picking as many up as I can, being careful not to drop any. And then, normally I just go all the way around, but I just wanna show you guys. Pull the yarn through all of that. And yeah, you just keep doing that. So if you wanna accomplish this on your top, you see how it's like, oh, let me zoom out. You see how it's like a drop stitch? All you have to do, is when you're casting off, just miss a stitch. So say I wanna do it, I'm not gonna do it, but I'm gonna show you guys what I would do if I did do it. I pick up a stitch and then I would just drop it. And then I would leave it alone and keep going as regular. I wouldn't pull my yarn through, but I don't wanna drop any stitches. So I'm gonna pick that back up. And yeah, this is how you cast off. It's pretty easy. Picking up stitches, picking up stitches. So yeah, that's how you... Just picking up stitches and pulling the yarn through them. I think casting off is kind of satisfying, honestly. But you gotta like focus, you don't wanna drop any stitches. Or you do, maybe you do. But like you don't want to accidentally drop any. Which I used to do and then I didn't understand until I did understand. You know? Alright, bet. So, now you can take it off. Pull your line, your yarn through. And then what I like to do is I like to see my tail's long enough to where I could just stretch it. I'm going to stretch it as much as I can. Because last thing you want is for it to be tight and, not, and be uncomfortable around your body. So I'm just stretching that as much as I possibly can. And then I'm gonna take my crochet hook and we're just gonna fasten off. So without pulling, you do not pull. Make sure it's loose. 
you're going to just go into a random stitch, take it, chain two, pull through, and boom. We have our first body panel. I hope that I hope that this tutorial is good so far. Because last thing I want is to make a tutorial that mm, doesn't make sense. So yeah, first body panel is done. I'm gonna make another one of these, and then I'll be back to show you guys the sleeves. Okay, so now it's time for the sleeves. If you just want the rundown, it's just. 38. I don't know if I said 35 earlier, but it's 38. 38. Um, cast on 38. 130 rows. That's the sleeve. Me too, though. But I'm going to go back to the panel because I was on two. And let's get started. So I'm going to show you guys one more time. Go under the white peg. Leave that. Behind and front. Behind and front. Behind and front. Until you reach the 38th peg. Or whatever peg you're doing. All right, I reached 38. Again, going to keep cranking until I'm under the loop under the 38th peg. Come back, put it through the thing, tension, boom. All right, now we can start cranking. Again, slowly taking my time, making sure I'm not skipping any stitches. Sometimes what I like to do, but I'm very careful about it, I'll take off like some yarn and then i'll hold it like loosely on my hand and that just kind of makes it easier so the yarn is not just rolling around everywhere so, yeah okay i've reached that white peg and i can't crank anymore so I'm just gonna start cranking back continuing my work and there's row one I'm going to keep doing it for 130 rows. <laughs> comment anything you have questions on. If I can't answer them, I'm sure there's going to be other people in the comments that can answer them. Or people in the comments that can answer them better than me, even. Let me know, like, how you found my channel. Like, did you search it? Did you find it on your recommended on YouTube, on TikTok, on Pinterest? Like... Like, how did you guys find my channel? I'm actually curious to know. I'm very curious to know. And where are you guys from? I have so many, like, I just want to know everything. I'm not everything. That sounds weird. But, like, I don't know. I just want to talk to you. I want to interact with you guys. I think it's so cool that you're really watching my video right now. Doing what I'm doing. Just to see me talk. Okay, so as I'm working on my sleeve panel, I noticed I run out of yarn. So I'm gonna show you guys how to um, add on more yarn. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is tie a knot and just keep cranking. Okay, so here's my new yarn. And then my old yarn is right here. I'm gonna tie these in a knot and then on a double knot and then I'm going to cut the excess. Okay, I just tied it really tight and I'm pulling it, making sure that it's not gonna come apart. And then I'm going to take my scissors and just cut off these little end pieces like this. And then when you're cranking, it's not going to go through the tension holder. So what you're going to want to do is just hold it. So let me show you. So I'm cranking like normal. Oops. And then once I reach here, you'll notice that you can be cranking and it's just not going to go because it doesn't fit through there. So what I do is I just take it out, hold it, crank, put it right back. And yeah, that's it. Just keep cranking. Then I'm going to cut the yarn. Then again, pull it out from here. And I'm going to unloop it from there. Unloop it from here. Then put it in the middle. And then I'm just going to start cranking like normal, slowly. Just casting off. I'm going to go back into mode so I can go all the way around. And 
and then boom. So now I'm going to thread my yarn through the little loop. Like so. And then start casting off. Picking up all my stitches. And again, if you want drop stitches, all you have to do is let go of one of these stitches. So if you accidentally drop a stitch, don't freak out because, well, I think it looks cool. Like your whole project is not gonna fall apart if you drop one stitch. So that's something you don't have to worry about. Cause I know I used to worry about that. I used to think if I dropped one, I would have to restart the entire thing, but you don't, you really don't. Last two. Pull through until there's no more yarn left and then just stretch it as much as possible. Then I'm gonna take my hook, glue it in there, chain two, oh, oh my goodness, okay, pull that tight and boom, create another one of those. And we're done with all of our, all of our panels. Finally. So yes, this is what your panels are gonna look like. And now for the tedious part of sewing everything together. Now we're gonna start stitching our panels together. So you're gonna start with your two body panels. And you're going to, personally, I like, cause the tops, you see how the tops roll? I like mine to roll like this rather than like this so therefore when i'm stitching together i'm going to make this the right side and this the wrong side i believe that's how it's ordered so basically i'm gonna put my right sides facing so my bottom right side facing up my top right side facing downwards so i'm gonna sew them together like this with them curving inward so then when you turn it inside out, they're outward. So I'm gonna make my neck hole first and I'm gonna take my stitch markers, which I'm using these little clippies. <clears throat> and I'm gonna take the two ends and I'm just gonna start pinning them together as wide as my shoulders go. So. And I'm going to pull it. It's really important that you pull your stitches so that they match each other. So I'm going to pull, add another stitch marker, and measuring it to my shoulder, seeing if I like the width. I'm going to do a little bit more. So pull and do right here. And this is about how much one of my shoulders is. You just kind of have to hold it against yourself and measure yourself to it to see how much your shoulder, how long your shoulder is. But yeah, I'm gonna do this to the other side, making sure that it's even. Okay, so I did the other shoulder and I'm just gonna measure them, make sure my clips stop at the same place, which they don't. So I need to add another stop around about here so they can match up. So let me do that real quick. Okay. So now they match up pretty well. So now I'm gonna start stitching them together. So you're gonna need your crochet hook and your yarn so you can use whatever stitch you want i like to use slip stitches because i find them to be the fastest and also i just like the way slip stitches look it's just kind of seamless so i used it slip stitches to put them together or you can even use a darning needle and uh, your yarn but i've tried that before and i didn't like the way it looked but it's all about what you like so i'm gonna go in the very corner of this very corner of this 
take my yarn, tie a knot. You kind of want to know how to crochet, but it's pretty easy. Slip stitches are very self, or not self explanatory they're very easy to learn how to do. So you don't really know, how to, you don't really have to know how to crochet, but it comes in handy. So double knot that. Now you have your two, you not, you're not, you're not connected and how I do it is I pull up a loop and I'm stretching the yarn, making sure I'm at the edges and it's not like curved or anything. And I just start slip stitching them together. And don't do it too tight because you don't want it to be tight against your, your shoulders or your arms or your waist or your neck because then it's really uncomfortable. But you also don't want it super loose because you don't want your pressure to have holes in it. Yeah, just slip stitch until you reach the end of, until you reach your stitch marker. And then as you're stitching your pieces together, something I like to do is to just kind of peek on the other side and check like if it looks a little messy. Okay, so I've finished up and sometimes there is gonna be loose stitches like this, but it's gonna be a side out so it doesn't really matter. And I'm just gonna take a peek at what it looks like on the other side, make sure that I'm liking it. And I do like it, it looks, I mean, it's never gonna look perfect, but it's, it's handmade, so but yeah. Just making sure that it doesn't look crazy. And then once I finish, I'm just going to chain two and cut my yarn. So this is literally what we're going to be doing for the whole top, just connecting panels. Um, the sleeves are what takes, takes all your time. The sleeves take quite a while, but once you get them done, you're done with your top. So yeah, it's really easy. I'm really hoping that you've made it this far into the video and you have four panels that look good <laughs> and you're on the road to a jumper. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to finish stitching this and I'll be right back. Okay, I've just finished the other side. Putting that, securing. And look at that. We have the front and back of our top. Now we just need to connect the sleeves and we almost be done. We're almost done. We're almost done, y'all. So yeah, you can try this on. Make sure that your neck can comfortably fit in the top. And now we're gonna start working on the sleeves. So to do the sleeves, you're gonna wanna open up your top on the wrong side. So the side where it doesn't look very nice. And then we're basically gonna connect it like this. So what I do, you can measure it out and find the middle, but I just kind of guesstimate by matching up the ends and then pulling this to find the middle, which is right about here. And I put a stitch marker there. And then I put this middle right here. So then once I put it in the middle, I kind of check if it's even by placing my stitch markers on the other side. So I'm stretching and then I'm going to stitch it. These are actually really nice stitch markers. Like I'm not even that mad that I lost mine. Well, I am actually because, you know, let me tell you, because I'm always like one of those people that are like, no, I'm not going to buy stitch markers. Oh no, I'm not going to buy tight measure. No, I'm not going to buy, because I'm like, I can just do that. I can just do it without it you know like i can use household things as um stitch markers so i was like i'm never buying stitch markers i was like i had a gift card right and i was like i might as well buy stitch markers you know it doesn't hurt and i loved them like i'm not gonna lie i loved them i used them for these jumper projects and now they're gone so yeah i'm kind of upset about that I don't think I, I don't know if I like lost them or I just can't find them because I went on a trip and I think I left it in the hotel. It was like such a cute little. It had like a a little container. It was so cute, but it what it is. So I stitched that side. Now I'm going to stitch this side. I've connected that to there with my stitch markers and to check if it's even, I just pull it up and I make sure that my two 
um, armpit parts match up. So if I were to sew it together, would they match up? And it's yes, they're both right next to each other. So now we can start sewing those. Making sure you're on the wrong side, making sure these are out. And you're just gonna repeat the sewing process. I'm just tying my knot. Pulling up a loop. And we're gonna start our slip stitches. I think I'm gonna speed this part up because I'm sure you're getting the hang of it. I hope you're getting the hang of it. Okay, just finished this panel. Or um, connecting the sleeve. It should look like this. And then I'm going to chain two, cut my yarn, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So look, look at, take a minute and look at your progress. Look at that. I'm like, look what you're making! Isn't it exciting? I think one, I, 130 for the sleeve might be a little too much. I might cut it down to 120, 110, 115. Because 130 is always really long. But I like long sleeves, so I don't mind it. But yes, look how beautiful. I'm loving this color combo. I think it's so pretty. I've never, I haven't made a blue one yet, so... It's really cool. Back to this side. Just your sleeve. Find the middle. Stitch it. And yeah, I'm gonna do the rest of this in time lapse, and I'll be back to show you guys how to close the sleeves and the body. And it will be. I'm excited. All right. We now have our two sleeves connected. And this is what your top should look like. So now all that's left to do is flip it and sew all of these together so i like to do it all in one go so let me cut off my yarn also this top has a lot of loose ends a lot like a lot that's something i learned when i was selling them and i had to sew in those loose ends so i was like oh my goodness this is a lot you can either start from down here or, up here, or down here it really doesn't matter same same result I'm gonna start from down here because this takes longer than this and I want to get this over with. So, I'm literally going to turn it back inside out. You always wanna make sure it's inside out when you're stitching together. So, these little messy stitches is inside out. And I'm going to just clip my sleeve together and match up all my stitches and then sew it together. Guys, we're almost done. And also, when I'm matching my sleeves up, I kind of roll out the parts that are rolled. So you see how it kind of rolls, which is kind of tedious, but... It ensures that my stitches look nice and neat. So it's all worth it in the end. All right, so I've just pinned this entire sleeve. You already know what's next. I'll be back. I'm not gonna time lapse this one. I'm 
I think this video is long enough. <laughs> All right, be right back. I'm gonna do a little transition too. <sighs> Boom, we did it. So, now that we've connected our sleeve, we're going to do the exact same thing coming down the body panel. And then once you do that, you're gonna do the everything that you did here on this side. I'm watching Ginny and Georgia, and I honestly don't know who I don't like more, Ginny or Georgia. Like, whenever I first started, or like before I watched this season, which is the recent season, season two, I oh, I was thinking like, oh, I don't like Ginny, Ginny this, I don't like Ginny, I don't like Ginny, I don't like Ginny, Ginny's so ungrateful, this, this, and this. But as I'm watching, I kind of like, I'm starting to not like Georgia. Some things that she does makes me mad. But at the same time, she kind of did it for her daughter, so I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Who do y'all think is, who's Saturday on, Ginny or Georgia's? Because I think I'm more on, wait, I don't know, actually. This is kind of hard. I, like, want to be on Ginny's side, but at the same time, I'm not, but at the same time, I am. There's, like, different, I don't know, but... I'm going to keep keep going from where I was at the armpit and just keep doing my slip stitches until I reach to the end of this row. Keeping them tight but not too tight. And I'll be back when I'm done. So here is the final result. This is it inside out. And then if we flip it. I cannot wait to try it on. Here she is. I'm loving this color combo. But yes, this is how you make these jumpers. Really easy, really fun, really cute. And pretty quick. You can knock out a couple of these in a day. But yeah, I really, 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 really hope this tutorial was good and it helped. Because I tried my best. And let's try it on because I can't wait. <laughs> okay. This is the final result. I think it's so cute. So I really hope this video was a good tutorial. I'm praying it was a good tutorial because I really tried. But yeah, I'm so in love with this top. I'm never taking it off. I think this is probably my favorite one that I made. I'm so obsessed with this colorway. And if you guys are interested in buying it, or you know someone that's interested in buying it, it'll probably be on my shop sometime soon. If you have any questions, comments, anything, 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 comments, 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 comments. I want to know what you, what's in your, your brain. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. Alright guys. I love you. Bye.